Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Technology IQ What's New, episode number three. So this looks back on all the neat things I found technology-wise for June of 2012. For more information, you can always visit the website Technology IQ at techiq.weltright.com. First off today, it's something that we all have a need to do from time to time, and that's figuring out just what's taking up all the space on our hard drive. One of my favorite tools for doing this on the Macintosh is Disk Inventory X. And by the way, you'll see links to all these items as part of the description on this video and also on the website. Disk Inventory X gives you both a textual and a visual idea of what is taking up space in your hard drive. It allows you to go through and clean up those things, archive if you have videos or pictures or other things that might be able to be moved off. As most of us are using laptops these days with smaller hard drives, we do have to do a little bit more disk management to ensure that we don't fill up our main machine so that when we're out and about, we still have the space we need to work. On the Windows side, I use WinDurStat. Again, both of these are free programs, and you see it does pretty much the same thing. I'm wondering if it actually might be based on some of the same underlying code. But again, tells you what on your hard drive is taking up the space and what you might be able to move off and open up some free space on your hard drive. In the iPhone world, one of the issues with the iPhone and other phones, and I believe this also yes, it does have an Android version as well, one of the big issues you deal with is battery life. How do you extend the battery life of your phone between charges? In my case, I simply tend to plug it in more often. I have a charger in my car, I have a charger at home, and that helps me get around any low battery problems. That said, there are ways using the software on the phone itself to figure out what's taking up all the battery charge and how you might lengthen your battery life. Carrot is an application, C-A-R-A-T, is an application that tells you just that. It gives you uh, information about your device. It also gives you information about what might be hogging up your battery life, things that are running when they don't need to be running. And it also has a bug report, which tells you if there are certain flaws that have been found that you can find updates for to help you solve some battery life issues. It's not perfect. Um, their service is a little bit busy. They were very popular. They got a lot of uh, coverage right off the bat. And it does require that it sends your information back to their site to be analyzed and then returned back to your phone. So sometimes there can be a delay in starting to use the program before it starts to return results as far as what might be taking up the battery life on your phone. Overall, I found it to be very useful. I am getting regular reports. I just started up my phone this morning and got a, an up-to-date report. So it is working. It may take a little while to start, but if you're having some battery life issues, it could be an interesting program to install just to see what's going on. The program, the program like most things I feature here on Technology IQ, is free from either the iTunes Store or the Google Play Store for Android phones. Oh, and here it's actually the uh, Carrot app listing on the iTunes store where you can see a few more screenshots about the information that it gives you. Next in line is something I think everyone can make use of. Oftentimes when I have clients buying new computers, they ask me right off the bat, oh, do I need to buy Microsoft Office? In some cases, they do. If they're dealing in a... Um, in some cases, they need to. If they're dealing with other coworkers or clients who are using Microsoft products exclusively, they may need to. But I find more and more that we really don't have any need to buy Microsoft Office when there are so many excellent free alternatives to MS Word, MS Excel, and other programs available directly from the internet. In this article from Smashing Apps, it gives 11 free alternatives that you can use for MS Word. The first one right off the bat is one of my favorites is something I use all the time and that is Google Docs. Google Docs allows you to do word processing documents, spreadsheets, presentations. It also allows you to store files 
and then share those files with the people you need to collaborate with and even collaborate in real time. We use this a lot for my career camp projects where we're organizing unconferences because it allows us all to edit the documents as we have time and everyone to see the changes and also see what changes were made by what person. One of the Google Docs competitors is Zoho Docs. It's been around for a long time. Very similar feature set, word processing, spreadsheets, and so on. Adobe Buzzword is something I played with a long time ago. Hasn't gotten a lot of traction, but it is available to you. Think Free, haven't really researched it at all, haven't played around with it. Again, another alternative. And finally, OpenOffice is something that I have installed on various machines that I've owned. It gives you an environment very much like uh, Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. It is installed on your computer. It's not a cloud-based app. It actually is software you download and install right on your computer so you have it free to use anytime you want. Some of the others listed are KOffice, NeoOffice for the Mac, which is basically a Macintosh version of the OpenOffice software, SoftMaker Office Suite, Jart, and so on and so forth. There's many, many alternatives, as you can see here. You can check out this entire article at Smashing Apps. Again, there'll be a link on the website, and perhaps you'll find something that allows you to wean yourself off of the um, need for Microsoft Office applications. On the Google site, again, one of the neat things about Google Docs now is that it has offline editing. What that means is, if you have a document in your Google Docs folder, or what they're now calling Google Drive, you will also get a, a copy of that document on your local computer's hard drive. Then, if you happen to be in a location where you don't have connection to the internet, you can actually edit that local document on your hard drive without any internet connection at all, and when you regain an internet connection, Google Drive will automatically resync that edited document back up to the cloud, back up to Google Docs. This can be very useful if you're grabbing time like I often do where I'm sitting in a car waiting for a client call to start, perhaps I arrived a little bit early, or I'm in the park, or I'm waiting to pick up my son from school, whatever, I can actually be productive no matter where I am, and I know that when I edit this document, it's automatically going to be synced back up to the cloud where I can access it from anywhere else. On the podcasting and new media side, again, for the iPhone, Apple has decided to, for whatever reason, pay a little more attention to podcasts. Podcasts have always been somewhat of the red-headed stepchild, to use a, a phrase, of the Apple world. They haven't been supported greatly. Apple does have a podcast directory in their iTunes store. They allow you to subscribe to podcasts. Well, what this new podcast app for the iPhone and iPad does, it allows you to do much of what you used to have to use iTunes for directly on your iDevice. For example, you can search for podcasts, you can subscribe to podcasts, and you can actually even automatically download episodes directly to your iDevice. I think this is part of Apple's general trend into making the iPad and the iPhone standalone devices that don't require the use of a Mac or a PC to do some of their functions. So they're trying to bring some of those functions that used to be PC only or Mac only directly into the iPhone and iPad itself. As a podcaster myself, I love seeing this new app. I love seeing Apple paying a little attention to the podcast. I think you'll find that there are tons of great podcasts out there, both created by big name media types like BBC or CBS, but also by individuals like myself on a wide variety of topics, everything from knitting to tech to health to science to whatever. Pretty much anything you can dream of, there's going to be a podcast out there just for you. You can download the podcast app directly from the iTunes App Store on your device or in iTunes on your PC or Mac. Here again is the entry at the iTunes Store online, and you can see some screenshots from the new podcast app. It allows you to speed up, slow down the playback, a variety of things that we've sort of become used to when listening on our devices, giving us the ability to consume the information in whatever fashion we wish. 
That's it for this episode of Technology IQ What's New. I hope you enjoy this episode. Please leave your comments on either the YouTube channel, as you're seeing here, or on the blog itself. Remember, the blog is techiq.welchright.com. Com. I'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions about technology that I should be taking a look at, or you have technology questions, please send them along. You can also email them to techiq at weltrite.com. Until next time, control your technology. Don't let it control you. <laughs>